Good afternoon. This meeting of the Audit Risk and Compliance Committee is now being recorded for record-keeping purposes. By participating in this session, you are consenting to the recording, retention, and future viewing of this meeting. This meeting is now being live-streamed. Please proceed. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lloyd Ebert. I will be sitting in today for Secretary Thal. The time is 1.22, and I will call this meeting to order. Uh, first item on our agenda is a roll call. Uh, Karen, could you lead us through that? Sure. Mr. Becker? I, I didn't hear anything. Oh. <laughs> it's my <Mike>. question. Present. <laughs> Present. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ebright? Here. Thank you. Representative Schemmel? Here. All right. And Ms. Soderberg? Here. Thank you. And uh, Secretary Thal will be joining us a little later. Uh, we do have uh, four members present, so we have a quorum. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda is approval of the minutes from the September 28th, 2021 meeting. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. So moved. Moved by Glenn. May I have a second? Second. Second. Give me the second. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, the motion passes. Uh, next item on the agenda is number four, old business, which we have none. Uh, next item after that is special presentations, which is also uh, none. Uh, number six on board docs is new business, uh, which is a review of the Audit Risk and Compliance Committee Charter. And at this time, I will pass it over to our Deputy Executive Director, Chris Houston, to review. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so item 6A on your agenda is the review of the Audit Risk and Compliance Committee Charter. Uh, included in administrative content, you'll find a number of documents, including a memorandum from me to the committee, along with a draft of the revis uh, revisions to the Audit Risk and Compliance Committee Charter. Uh, you also see that we just uploaded this morning a later revision uh, to the uh, to the proposed charter based on conversation that we had with Mr. Ebright prior to the meeting on behalf of the treasurer, which I'll go over in a minute. Let me just set the scene uh, for why we're uh, looking at this at this point. Uh, so, as you were as you are aware, uh, Funston Advisory Services did a thorough analysis of a, a fiduciary review and a board self-assessment. They uh, issued a final report, which had a number of recommendations in it uh, based on their review and based on the self-assessment. Uh, included in those recommendations uh, were a number that were uh, allocated to the Board Governance and Personnel Committee for review and analysis, and then also a number for the Investment Committee, and there was one with the Finance and Member Participant Services Committee. Uh, included in the ones that were before the Board Governance and Personnel Committee were regarding uh, proposed um, uh, recommendations dealing with uh, the board's direct reports. So the board has a number of direct reports, one being the executive director, one being the uh, your chief investment officer, one being the internal audit director, and then the final two would be the chief counsel and the chief compliance officer. They, they had a, a, a couple of recommendations um, and specifically pertaining to the charter, was in uh, having a, a collaborative process and dealing with the, uh, the review of performance and goals of the direct reports, is also and also to perhaps provide opportunity for more informal feedback to the direct reports. The charter, uh, we thought, it made sense to revise it to really tie in with how the performance review really is conducted with the internal auditor and the chief compliance officer. So the Commonwealth, uh, those, those two uh, positions, uh, we follow a Commonwealth management directive and a sir specific administrative employee performance review policy in providing for the performance review of those positions. We revised the language to specifically provide that we're looking for the committee to provide input to the 
to the uh, position that provides the uh, that, that's we'll call the uh, uh, the officer that's in charge, if you will, of, of, of providing for the, the performance review. So we revised the language to provide for that input directly from the committee to, in the case of the internal audit director, to the executive director, uh, and then for the chief chief compliance officer, we provided that 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 input would be provided directly to the executive director and, as is the case today, if the position, the chief compliance officer position is administratively housed in the chief counsel's office to the chief counsel, who would then conduct the evaluation pursuant to the employee performance review pro uh, process. We also, uh, through that process, provides for an interim progress review during the year. So that kind of addresses, if you will, the uh, informal feedback to be provided to uh, those positions. And it, frankly, it can be done anytime through the year. But so it really meshes, if you will, with how we actually conduct our performance reviews. Um, now, based on a conversation that we had late yesterday uh, with, with Lloyd, and I'll, I'll turn it to Lloyd to, to speak to the, the issue that he raised, uh, and then you'll find in your uh, administrative content in board docs, we uploaded it's item 6A5, uh, which is a latest red line. And what we've done, and we've added some language at the end of it, which basically provides that with whatever input is received from the members, from each member, we want that to be included in the evaluation. So, Lloyd, I don't know if you want to want to speak to that. Um, no, actually, I think that summarizes it pretty well. We just wanted to uh, ensure that each member's feedback was included in the evaluation. Right. So, uh, so as I said, the, the latest version of that is document 6A5. And I'll just read uh, for each of those positions how it would read if you agree that uh, these amendments are appropriate. Uh, so for the uh, uh, for the internal audit director, it would read, the committee shall provide input to the executive director in the evaluation of the internal audit director with the input received from each member to be included in the evaluation. And then for the chief compliance officer, it would read, the committee shall have input into the candidate search process and selection of the chief compliance officer. In addition, the committee shall provide input to the executive director and uh, if the chief compliance officer position is administratively housed in the chief counsel's office, the chief counsel, with the input received from each member to be included in the evaluation. I see, Mary, do you have a question? Yeah, just a, a quick quick question. Am I? Yeah. Um, are you referring to the committee of the, are you referring to the members of the committee? Or? Members, of the commi members of the committee, Mary. Okay, so not all of the members of the board. Correct. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, Chris, I, I think you misread the um, paragraph concerning the uh, chief compliance officer. You, you left out a clause, I think. It In says the that. The chief. Yes, if the chief compliance officer position is administra administratively housed in the chief counsel's office, the chief counsel. Uh, in the evaluation of the chief compliance officer with the input received from each member to be included. There, there's, there's extra clause there. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Um, so the process going forward is if this committee uh, is desirous of amending the charter, you would take that action today and rec make a recommendation to the board for approval of the amendments However, the Board Governance and Personnel Committee, which will be meeting after this meeting, would then be reviewing uh, that same charter revision and then taking action to concur with this committee's uh, recommendation for approval and then notify the board. And then the process uh, pursuant to our bylaws is if there are any charter amendments, that there's a 15-day advance notice period to the board before we act on those. So these charter amendments wouldn't officially then be acted by the board until they meet uh, in the beginning of next year. So I'll open it up for any further questions or comments. Oh, did you, Terry, did you want to make a comment? If no more 
if no board members have any. I don't see any hands. Okay. I just wanted to clarify, it looks like what was removed was that the evaluation would be reported by the committee to the board and that was taken out. I just wanted to make mm -hmm. sure that was intentional. Yes. Okay, very good. So I think this is good. I think uh, thank Chris for putting this together. I think it's, it strikes the right balance of what we're doing currently along with uh, ensuring that every member's uh, input is, is valid and is uh, included in the file. So with that, I, I do have, unless there are, are any other questions, I do have a motion I would like to read. And it is a motion is an order for the Audit Risk and Compliance Committee to recommend one to the State Employees Retirement Board that it approves the amendments to the Audit Risk and Compliance Committee Charter as set forth in the attached after receiving input from the Board Governance and Personnel Committee and two to the Board Governance and Personnel Committee that it concurs with this committee's recommendation and so inform the State Employees Retirement Board. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Soderberg. Uh, may I yes. have a second? Second. second. Uh, all, do we need to do a roll call on this? Since yeah. Karen, can you lead us through the roll call? I think you're muted. Sorry about that. Uh, Mr. Becker? Aye. Uh, Mr. Ebright? Aye. Representative Schemmel? Aye. And Ms. Soderberg? Aye. And uh, Secretary Thal is absent currently. <clears throat> it is unanimous for the members that are present. Great. Thank you. Um, the next item on our agenda is 6B, the State Employees Retirement Board Draft Internal Audit Office Charter. Uh, Chris, did you want to provide a summary on that too? Uh, I can speak to it, Lloyd. Um, the charter is, uh, is an informational item only. It's uh, an advanced copy. Uh, and we will be uh, actually reviewing it uh, and presenting it formally to the committee uh, in early early next year. Okay, thank you. Uh, so next on our agenda, I think we're going right to executive session to uh, discuss a number of items which are on the agenda. Um, Joe, is there a... Do we have legal to uh, uh, make the statement of going into executive session? Yes, please. Joe will be right there. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but before, Sorry. Before, we, before we go into that, uh, Lloyd, Lloyd yes. before we go into that, um, I, I, back on the, on the charter revisions, just so everyone has a clear understanding of the EPR process, Joe reminded me, he just came in my office and reminded me that uh, just so everyone has a thorough understanding of that we do have uh, Katie on the phone uh, or on the Teams call, just, to, just so everyone understands what that process is. Great, thank you. Would anyone like to avail themselves of, of Katie with any questions on the e EPR process? Okay, I think we're good. Joe, can you read yes. the statement? So, so going to the um, executive session agenda, the Sunshine Act allows an executive session, oops, yes, allows an executive session to consult with auditors on their work plans, the results of their audits, and their work papers. All of the items on the executive session, the um, KPMG's 2021 audit plan strategy, the compliance officer update, the internal audit office update, the review of due diligence and all the other items, the results of the Green Book, uh, the review of the performance goals, and the COSO Green Book status reports all fall within the uh, acceptable privileged or confidential discussions allowed in an executive session. 
Thank you. Do do we need to make a motion to go into executive session? You do not. Okay. Right. No, but before you go into executive session, please uh, give us a minute to make a few technical changes here in the boardroom on your behalf. All right. Well, thank you. As a reminder, this meeting is being uh, live streamed as well as recorded. Thank you. Um, hello. As we come out of the executive session, I want to correct my pre-executive session announcement. Uh, item uh, F in the executive session agenda, review of the performance goals for the internal audit director is actually a personnel matter. Uh, the discussion of the terms, conditions, performance, and so on of a specific employee. Uh, even though there was not any discussion on that topic in executive session, uh, I mischaracterized it as an audit matter instead of a personnel matter. So I want to correct the record. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think, are there any committee uh, comments, concerns, or questions? Seeing none, our next um, committee meeting is in February. Um, and a motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. And I'll second it. Any, um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. The ayes carry. Um, thank you everyone and thank you for your patience and accommodation. And I look forward to the Board of Governors Committee meeting next. Thank you.